Hello guys and welcome to our first video. My name is Sakis Spahos and in this first tutorial we're going to talk about the basics of Wix code. Uh, the very basics. Uh, so let's get started. You first have to apply for the beta and be accepted. Once you do that, in the editor, on the tools, you have to enable developer tools. Now once you do that, you're gonna see here two new sections. One is the database, which we will talk about on our next tutorials, and the user input. We have eight different inputs. The first one is the input, the radio buttons, the drop down, the checkbox, the text box, the upload button, the date picker, and the table, which table is basically not an input, but we will see it later. So firstly, we have the input button. The input button can be basically anything to use, like uh, first uh, name, for example. And another one for last name. Now this is for form example so you can see exactly where they use they are used so they are used basically uh, for small inputs like name and stuff uh, in the settings panel we can just have nothing or select what we're going uh, to want to display here we can of course do the same here now we can select if it's one if we want to be required when uh, when we have a button to submit the form if this uh, checkbox is selected if it's required the form will not be submitted if this field is not filled if it's not selected it will not matter now read only uh, we will see why it's for later when we will use Wix code. Uh, limit length is how many characters you want a field, the maximum characters to have. For example, here we will put 10, and we will see that I will not be able to put more than 10 characters. Here you can write your own custom validation, which uh, the user's input have to match in order for the, for the input to be accepted. We will see more of that later. Our next input is radio buttons. Radio buttons can be used for something like um, age, for example. Here we see the radio buttons field, uh, the options. The first one is the visible to the user. This is what the user will see. This is what the user sees. You see, you can see it here. Now the value, we use it on the JavaScript. So this is, this is used on JavaScript. Now we have created three options. We can add another one by add a button and we can add a different option here. The settings panel, you can select which one is selected at first. You see, it's the default selection. Or you can have none selected. And of course, if you want it to require it or not. Our next field is the drop down. So our drop-down can be used for, uh, let's say, the state. And here, choose your state. In the manage items, it's much like, like the radio buttons. Uh, the values again, which we use on JavaScript.
Um, in a normal example, we would use something like uh, state run actually, same as the label. Uh, do remember, don't use capitals because you will have problems on code, but we will talk all about that later once we get to the code. Another field are checkbox. Now on the checkbox you will see that it's basically grouped, a grouped element with text. The text is a simple text, it's, it's nothing special. The special one is a checkbox here. So do remember it's different. This is a group, but this is the element. Okay, uh, set value we will see here if you want it to be required or not. And the value, again, is the value we will use on JavaScript code. We will use it, for example, I agree on the toss, sorry, toss, terms of service. Our next field is, okay, our next field is text box. Now, text box is much like, actually the same, the very same, with the, um, the with this field, the user input, but it's for much larger inputs here. So, for example, um, add uh, comments or add details or order details, for example. On here we will be able to change the text that is displayed here. So here is the text that we change. Okay, again limit length, how many characters you want the user to be able to input. We can just add 10 or, or something if you want to limit the length or disable it. Uh, if we want it to be required, next field is an upload button. Now you can set it to be document or image. So here you can change the text, text button. And the placeholder is what it shows here. So text one here, as you see, and if we want it to require it or not, or if we don't want the text there, we can just place no here. Our next one is the date picker. Let's leave those here for a moment. And the last one is the table. Now for the table, we don't have a lot to talk about in this tutorial, but basically you can just display data from a database in this, uh, in this table here. Also, you will need a simple button There is nothing special about this button. You will just need an ordinary one to submit the form. So this is our final form, this is our first name, the last name, here the user can pick a date, a state, and enter some text here. Now of course you can edit how each of the 
fields look by clicking on the design and customize design. So this is all for our first tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and see you on the next one.